Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about the Euclidean algorithm. I will first give a statement of the algorithm, then I'll give an example and why it works. So first of all, the Euclidean algorithm is an algorithm used to find the GCD, or the greatest common divisor, between two positive integers. So let's go through the algorithm. So the algorithm takes two positive integers, which we'll call A and B. And these two numbers don't necessarily need to be positive. If we had any negative numbers, we could just take the absolute value to make them positive, and then our algorithm will work exactly the same. We're assuming A and B aren't equal, since if they're equal, then obviously the greatest common divisor is just itself. And we're also going to assume that A is greater than B. If, in fact, B was greater than A, then we could just switch the variable names and call B A and A B, and it would work exactly the same. So the first step is writing A as B times a quotient Q plus a remainder R, where we have R is greater than or equal to 0 and less than B. And we know that we can find these unique integers Q and R from the division algorithm proof, which I've done in another video. Now the next step is doing this exact same thing that we did above, but now using the integers B and R. So we're going to write B as R times the quotient, which we'll call Q1, plus this new remainder, which we'll call R1, where we know that R1 is greater than or equal to 0 and less than R. And then we'll repeat the process, this time using R, and R1. So we'll write R as a multiple of R1 plus a new remainder R2. And we'll continue to do this until this remainder here is equal to 0. So we'll say for some R sub I minus 2, we can write that as R sub I minus 1 times Q sub I plus R sub I. And then the very next one will be R sub I minus 1 equals R sub I times Q sub I plus 1, where we have the remainder is 0 now. So this notation gets a little ugly when we have to write it out. But the point is that you can just continuously repeat this process until the remainder is zero. Then once we do that, we get that the last non-zero remainder is the GCD. So since this was the last non-zero remainder, that tells us that the GCD of A and B is equal to R sub I. So let's look at an example to clear this up a little bit. Let's say we wanted to find the GCD between the integers 34 and 55. The first step is to write 55 as a multiple of 34 plus a remainder. So we get that 55 equals 34 times 1 plus a remainder of 21. Where of course 21 is the unique remainder that is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 34. Now we're going to do that same thing, but this time we're going to do it with the integers 34 and 21. So bringing 34 down here and 21 down here, we get that 34 equals 21 times 1 plus a remainder of 13. And then repeating the process, now moving 21 to the left side and 13 down here, we get that 21 equals 13 times 1 plus 8. Continuing, we get 13 equals 8 times 1 plus 5, and then 8 equals 5 times 1 plus 3, 5 equals 3 times 1 plus 2, 3 equals 2 times 1 plus 1, and then 2 equals 2 times 1 plus a remainder 0. And since the last non-zero remainder was 1, that tells us that the GCD of 55 and 34 is equal to 1. And this one's kind of a cool example because if you look at the remainders here, you might have noticed that they give the first couple of entries in the Fibonacci sequence. So it's kind of a fun example to look at, but hopefully you can see now how the algorithm works. Now next I want to go into why it works. So I'll keep the algorithm up on the left, and then we'll go through why it works on the right. First, notice that these remainders are strictly decreasing. As you can see, R1 is less than R, R2 is less than R1, all the way down till R sub I is less than R sub I minus 1. So with each step, we know that the remainder is going to be less than the one of the previous step. And what that tells us is that we will eventually get a remainder of 0. As for the reason why the GCD of A and B is equal to the last non-zero remainder, which we call R sub I, we can look at a theorem which will explain why this is the case. So really the whole reason this algorithm works is based on one theorem that says if we have an integer A that equals B times some quotient Q plus a remainder R, then the GCD of A and B is the same as the GCD of B and R. So before I go into the proof of this theorem, let's assume that it's true and see how it would actually prove the validity of the Euclidean algorithm. So if we said that the GCD of A and B is the same as the GCD of B and R, 
and this is for any integers a and b and b and r, where we have it written like this, then that means we can do the same thing over here with b and r and r1. So we would get that the GCD of b and r is the same as the GCD of r and r1. So as you can see, what we've done is we've said that the GCD of a and b is now the same as the GCD of r and r1. And we could do it again, and we would get that the GCD of r and r1 is the GCD of r and r2. So you see that each time we do this, whatever was on the right here goes to the left, and what that means is that all of these are equal. So the GCD of a and b is the same as the GCD of r1 and r2. And if we kept on going, we would get that all of this equals the GCD of r sub i minus 1 and r sub i. And then from this last equation, we know that that is the same as the GCD of r sub i and 0. Now with this, we know that the GCD of any number with 0 is just the number itself. So we conclude that this equals r sub i, which remember was the last non-zero remainder. So if we can prove that this theorem is true, then that would tell us that the GCD of a and b is the same as the GCD of r sub i with 0, which equals r sub i. And that would prove the validity of the Euclidean algorithm. So let's go ahead and take a look at the proof of this theorem. To start this proof, I'm going to let d be any common divisor of a and b. So d is not necessarily the greatest common divisor, it's just any arbitrary common divisor between a and b. So of course that means that d divides a, that's what this little line here means, it's telling us that d divides a, and also of course since d is a divisor of b, that means that d divides b, or b is a multiple of d. Then from this, it's not too hard to conclude that d must also divide a minus b q. And that's because a is a multiple of d, b is a multiple of d, meaning b q must be a multiple of d, that means that we can factor out d from a minus bq. So that means we can write a minus bq as d times some integer, which is the same thing as saying that d divides a minus bq. And since we know that a minus bq actually equals r, that tells us that d must divide r. Now we're going to look at the common divisors of b and r. So let e be any common divisor of b and r. That means that e divides b and e divides r. And just like above, we know that e divides b times q plus r. Because since e divides b, e must divide a multiple of b. And we know e also divides r, which means we can factor e out of this b times q plus r. And then of course we know that b times q plus r is a. So that tells us that e divides a. So what we've shown is that any common divisor of a and b must also be a divisor of r, and any common divisor of b and r must also be a divisor of a. And this means that d is a common divisor of a and b if and only if d is a common divisor of b and r. So the set of common divisors of a and b must be the same as the set of common divisors of b and r. So if these two sets of common divisors are the same, that means that the GCDs of each of these sets must also be the same. So that tells us that the GCD of A and B is equal to the GCD of B and R. And that concludes the proof of this theorem and the proof that the algorithm is valid.